Episode 7, Untold Stories. I'm Enz with the Lens. It's Pet Mando. And today we got an East Oakland legend, man. None other than Double R, man. Richie Rich, man. What's popping with you, bro? Yeah, How we doing? Business with my guy, Enz, yeah. man. What's to do? Man, I ain't making no noise, man. Just, uh, you know, trying to get back to the scene with the music. Just dropped a new album to grow on. So, uh, I'm just, you know, greasing my wheels, my axles. Come on, So I can slide up on these niggas. Just so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you did. Yeah, who was Richie Rich as a kid growing up? Oh uh, shit, my my upbringing was was middle class. Um, shit, we stayed up the hill. You know what I mean? I went down the hill, but I'm from up the hill. Had all the latest bikes, anything you could have. My daddy was a, a plumber, pipe fitter. You know what I mean? Worked in the shipyards. Had a decent middle class bankroll, so I was I was straight. I had everything I needed. You know, mongooses and go karts and mopeds. Yeah, and mopeds and all type of shit. So I had a great upbringing, bro. Uh, you know, I just chose to get down there and get squirrely. You feel me? I heard that. So when you when you when you just started start like making music, how'd you get into rapping? I started. I got into the rap game. Basically, I started freestyling. That was my thing. You feel me? Shout out to all the freestylers too. It's a few cats like Fab is a, a extraordinary freestyler um, from around here. It's a lot of cats who freestyle. That was my thing that before I had even recorded anything. It was just like a freestyle thing. Me and my little cousin, he used to beatbox. His name was Mike. And so we used to get in the car and just, we'd jump on the freeway and, and we would freestyle off a of license. I would freestyle off a of license plate, whatever the exit was, just trying to stay tuned up. Versatile. Yeah, and then I messed around and uh, I wrote my first record. It was Don't Do It. And that, I dropped that back with the 415 and the rest is history. So you formed 415 back in the 80s, right? 89. 89. 1989, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. we was fresh off the, out the dope game. Just really getting our feet wet in the street. 415, like I said, I started as Richie Rich. And then I formed a group 415 with two other people, DJ Durrell and D-Lo. And um, from there, man, let's, summer of 89 was ours. 90, summer of 90, I say, we dropped that record and the shit went crazy. Here I am. Right. You know, uh, well, another thing that I just found out was that you were a huge influence of Snoop Dogg's fucking career. You and you know, know what's like, crazy? Fall on fire. Right, Let me right. tell you, what's crazy about that is that? Snoop said that. He said that. I didn't know he had said it. I saw it printed. And yeah. I, I was like, damn, really? But I knew Snoop because I had met Warren G first. Uh, I met Warren one night with Tupac. We did a, uh, we did a song at the studio. Um, that you ain't got a lot of kicking on one of Pac's old Tricks houses. in the bitches, yeah, yeah, yeah. got to steal the niggas' riches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Falling like Jordan, you punk. <laughs> Fake inside the pain, in fact, they see you. Yeah. You know what time it is. So that's where I met Warren, and yeah. Warren had told me the same shit. He was like, nigga, we, we grew up on that 415 shit, nigga. We used to be on the block slanging cavity, nigga, knocking that shit. We knew all the words to the shit. And then Snoop said, yeah, then one day we was like, fuck that shit. Man, we two and three. Yeah. And boom, they came with it. So. For our shit to make it all the way down the highway. And what happened was, our shit was local and we was independent. But what happened was it was people who was from our city group, went to college in LA, went to San Diego State, mm -hmm. went to Atlanta to college. That's and they, they took the, fire. Yeah, they took the tape and the CDs with them. And bam, that's what happened. It caught fire, you feel me? Yeah. When did you actually know y'all was really popping like before the sneaker all the time? Um, when I was doing the 415 shit, I had a 72 cut, it's a green hard top. Mm. But you always I, been into it. Yeah, yeah, always been into it. I had a 72 cutlass, but it was the round back one, not the square one like my fast back. Yeah, the fast back one. And I remember when I bought that car, I showed it to my nigga KT. KT was like, you got the cutlass? I said, yeah, so I pulled up on him. And he looked, he said, my nigga, I think you got the wrong, you might've got the wrong one. 
right? Because <laughs> my shit was the fastback. Yeah. But I know no better. I was a young nigga. I had 800. The lady wanted 800. That motherfucker was three <laughs> times green. I cashed out and got gone. So I made that car. That was my first whip with music on it. In it, I mean, I had her, uh, her caps and whites in the green. I painted a uh, dark emerald green, emerald green top, put a roof in it, hella beat, 412s, a Zeus, zap board. So this is how I knew we was on to something. We had a beat shop we used to fuck with named, uh, Dig a beat dude named Digital D. He had a beat shop in Oakland. He was looking up everybody's beat. He did beat for Be Legit. That's where I met Bela at that shop. So hella niggas who had stereos and money, D-Boys used to hang it there and shop. I used to come down there and I'd be playing whatever we recorded, mm -hmm. whatever we had just recorded, groupie or some shit like that, side show. Every song we recorded, I'd come through, I'd be knocking my shit. Boom. Niggas used to steal the cassettes. Niggas used to lure me out of the car. <laughs> be like, Rich, look at this nigga, he's gonna do some dumb shit. <laughs> and I'd yeah, yeah. call them niggas out. Joe Ray from Sobrani. <laughs> that nigga Joe Ray started the shit. Joe was like, hey, fly, let me up. Show you this nigga doing the donut down the street. Yeah. And then you go over there and the nigga watching the nigga do the donuts. When I come back, we smoking, I get in the car. When I leave, I go to turn my shit on and the radio is on. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I could have swore with Man, the niggas got me. So then I start noticing like niggas would always steal the tapes. And I said, niggas must really like this shit. Right, right. And that's when I knew I was on the song. And niggas gave you for your tapes. Yeah, guys. for real. When did you, you meet Tupac Sakura? I met Tupac. Through a chick named Teresa. Teresa was one of my homegirls I used to smoke with and I used to play with too. She's from Berkeley. Shout out Teresa. Shout out alive. Teresa. I ain't seen Teresa in a long time. Teresa was cool as fuck. She had one of her titties was a little bigger than the other. I didn't know about <laughs> Teresa. But Teresa was dope as fuck. Like she introduced me to Pac. She called me one day. She was like, Hey, you got some weed? I was like, Yeah, that's when I used to be trapping the, the, the tin sacks and all the shit. So I'm like, yeah, I got some weed. So she like, uh, I got one of my homeboys out here from New York. He, he looking for some weed. I think you should come not only sell him some weed, but network with the nigga because he rapped too. You niggas got a lot in common. I was like, all right, cool. So I blasted Berkeley, served the weed, and it was pop, right? So I didn't know him from, you know, a can of paint. He didn't know me. Um, I think he had possibly heard of me, and I had definitely heard of him, but I didn't know him. So I started serving him. We kind of started just hanging out. You know, every now and then he called me. That's what the outlaws used to them those little they was like little niggas like man, them niggas had to be in their teens, like thirteen, fourteen, yeah. you know, fifteen little young niggas. Yeah. yeah, and they were still them same little rowdy little niggas. Um, I start serving pop weed, we start hanging out, we just had more and more in common and we start fucking with it, bro, and ever since then I kinda try I start lacing him on open game because he told me like I'm from the East Coast, but you know I got I got footing here in the town with the Panther shit. I was like, that's dope. Because his mom, right? Yeah, yeah, so I was like, that's dope. So he was on some, let's do some music shit. I'm like, let's get to it. But what we year never, was this? This, I mean, don't give me the line. I'm not a Met Pac in. We still was doing 415. And this was bef this was right around the Brenda's Got a Baby era. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, 90, right around yeah, there. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, this was pre-digital. He wasn't mm -hmm. with digital yet. He hadn't got with digital. So whatever year digital and Pac linked up, it was right before that. Yeah. He was like, he wanted to do some music. And I remember laughing and talking shit with him. I'm like, man, we on some gangster shit. You know what I mean? And he was on the Black Power shit. But to see where he went and where he took it, I mean, the shit. The nigga, I used to always tell people, he was the little, he went from the little homie to the big homie. <laughs> Musically, because right. the nigga just blew the fuck up. Right. You feel me? Mm -hmm. what's, what's one of the first songs you made with him? That, uh, that You Ain't Got a Lot of Kick It is the first time I ever was on a track with Pop Warren G produced the beat. Then from there, we like I said, he was my homeboy, so we wasn't on no music shit. Right. Like, even when he died, it was hella people hitting me like, we want to do an interview with you, and if you got any pictures of you and Tupac, any pictures you can have. But like, how many times do like you and your homies just be taking pictures? Like, right, right, like this right. my nigga, I'm gonna see, see this nigga time. tomorrow. Yeah, let's yeah. we'll see this nigga tomorrow. We gonna be like, hey, we homies, let's get a few shots. Yeah. Or I might be dying later on. Let's get a few shots. It wasn't like that. We was just fucking with it. You know what I mean? So we didn't. We did uh, a lot of kicking. Yeah, we you did. did we die. did. We did a lot of kicking. And then the next time we hooked up was on his. Uh, Oh, no, nah, before that, the uh, Me Against the World. Against the That's world. where we did uh, certain niggas want to stick to the game, use a trick to the game. That's where we first did that record. Uh, 
What's the name of that what, song? Um, what about that with uh, Heavy in the Game? That's Heavy in the Game right yeah. there. So Heavy in the Game was on, on wasn't on All Eyes on Me. It was on um, Me, against the, Me world. against the World. That was hard. Man, right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then we ran it back when he got on Death Row and he was doing All Eyes on Me. He hit me and was like, hey, I want to do a bunch of songs with you and a bunch of your niggas. So that's when me, me and him, I mean, me and all the niggas from up here, 40, Vila, D-Shot, c but we all went down there and got on the All Eyes on Me album. That made it go crazy. Hey, right, man, and it went crazy. I mean, and I think every nigga that's from up here that got on that record is glad they made the trip. Because that, that record was it. Yeah. And so y'all was all in the studio all, all together. All right. See, that's when that's, that's when you had to do it like that. Come on. Before all this technology, like yeah. a nigga couldn't email you the beat. Yeah. You rap on it where you the or the fuck you at. You used to have to get on the plane, fly out there, fuck with the nigga. And I, I trip off that shit now when I look at all the money that got cut out of the game. Cause you used to have the airlines used to get some money. Cause if I wanted to do a song, just say with Scarface from Houston, right. I got to fly to Houston. I got to get a room, so the hotels lost some money. Restaurants, cause we gonna go eat, fuck with it. The weed man lost some money. I'm face this, let's get some weed. Mm-hmm. Well, then we go to the studio, actually sit down, fuck with it, feel each other's energy, mm-hmm. talk some shit, boom, drop a record. Now you can still make dope records when a nigga send you music, but to me, I think when it's <clears> organic <throat> yeah. and you in there together, you niggas pick up on a vibe and shit. It's me for me and Pop like working together came easy, cause. He was great at what he do as far as writing and getting in there laying and shit. I'm the same way. I get out right, get in late. We in and out. We not spending no whole bunch of so time. So you had like song. similar work ethic because I heard yeah, he was a well, no, no. He. Ha- I wish I had Pac's work ethic. If I did, you niggas wouldn't be interviewing me right now. I'd be over there <laughs> fucking with Oprah or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 them, 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 them dudes, that nigga had work ethic, bro. I mean, you just did, serious. That, that, shit, that, yeah, yeah. I'm, my, I'm not even finna sit here and lie. Like, <laughs> like uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, you know, some niggas will cap it out. Rich ain't gonna cap it out. I'm gonna right. give it to you 100. Yeah. His work ethic was smoking mine. But I was dope enough to where nigga I could lay off and get in there and handle my business. Oh. You feel me? How, how'd you get your style to rap like that? You know what's crazy? I wasn't rapping like I rap now when I was in 415. Uh, rap styles changed. Like, I was rapping like niggas was rapping back then. Mm-hmm. And then the styles kind of evolved. I don't know where I in, we're not involved into like the player pimp shit because in 415 I wasn't really on that. I was just like the D-boy nigga, like hustle music. Uh, I always you had some game. Yeah, I always had some game for you. Every time it's going, it's that's it's gonna be game. I I don't try to take the game out of it. Like niggas don't want no game. Let me take the game out of it and just mm-hmm. it's impossible. My homie. So my style is, I tell people when they be like, "What's your style?" I just be like, "I just really spit my life." And depending on how the music sound, that's how I'm gonna rap. Right. I don't have like a certain style as far as the way I flow. But whatever the, the way, however the music is moving. That's usually how I jump on the beat. So, I'll be honest with you. I told Rax and him this when they was here earlier. Shout out for Rax and Mechanics, too. Mm-hmm. Um, nigga, it ain't, I'm not really that good to where I can sit here and tell you, okay, so what I do is I put right. two teaspoons of this shit, <laughs> and then I wait, and then I throw this in. And what, man, the shit just kind of happens, bro. Everything mm-hmm. I done ever did done kind of just happen, you know? And how'd, you, how'd you feel about being the first uh, artist at Def Jam? D- dope as fuck. Cause I'm in that nigga, cause that's West Russell West Simmons. You feel me? Yeah. I mean, that was huge for me. That was huge for me. Cause what it was is that was a time in my life where I realized, okay, people really like my shit. It's one thing to hear niggas playing your shit in the car. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to have your whole city on you. But when you get a nigga like Russell Simmons, a, a, a East Coast rap label, talking about signing you, and shit, shout out Warren G for making shit like that happen. Cause he was the first West Coast signing. And when they seen how much money they they made with Warren. I guess they figured like, okay, these West Coast niggas might be on or something. Right. I mean, then when you feel that like New York is picking up, like, well, they're listening to Richie Rich, and I, and you're going back to the Grandmaster, Flash, the Furious Five, and the original rock hey. team, and, and that's where the mecca came from, and they're picking up the Warren G shit. Hey. I mean, they're picking up the Richie Rich shit. Come on. But see, you know what's crazy? That's where rap started for me. Like, yeah, right. For, for me, LL Cool J, EPMD, yeah, Rock uh, Cool Mo D. Eric B and Rakim, them, even though I'm a West Coast nigga, them was the niggas that I used to listen to as a kid. Them was even, you know, them was the niggas that inspired me to rap. So to have a East Coast label come back and 
I don't know if it's because maybe some of my style. I mean, because I don't do. I have just a West Coast style. No, it's not versatile. Really like, but it's versatile, right? Yeah. I don't. I'm it, not even gonna call it versatile. I'm just gonna call that's Richie Rich. Right. So I got my you own thing I do, and that's you know, cool. you can, your, your music could apply to a lot of different people around the world. It's universal. Right. right. Yeah. And if anyone's doing what you're doing, they're like, "Oh, I'm going with that." They sound like Richie Rich. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. I mean, I, all I really try to do is is me. You know, and that's probably. I'm going to give it to you like for my laps in the music. It ain't all my fault. A lot of it is my fault because I rap and then I trap and then I trap and then I trap and then I trap <laughs> and then maybe I rap and then I trap. That's the, that's my fault. But what I can say is um, a lot of my laps in the music have been when the music got away from what I was doing. You feel me? So it was a part of me that was like Maybe niggas ain't on what I'm on. Right. Period. Maybe niggas don't want to hear what I'm talking about because right. this is the shit they on now. Right. You feel me? Period. So then you got your artists who can do, if I put it in like, say, just an actor. You got actors who can do one thing really well, and then you got some actors who can do it all. Right. Denzel's a nigga to me who can do hella shit, right? So some rappers bring that to the table. Oh, this what they on? When they get on this, oh, I got that too. And then, oh, well, now they on this. Oh, I got some of that, too. I ain't that nigga. Like, I'm the actor that do this one thing that I do. You stay really in the lane. Yeah, so I do that. And I tell niggas all the time, if I, if I could break it down to where it's like food, I serve pizza. So pizza popping, nigga, and the ovens is going, nigga. They buying slices. They want whole pies. But I mean, it's moving. Pasta. But, yeah, once they go to that, then, nigga, I just got to kick back to the pizza, get back popping. Right, right. Where some niggas going to be like, nigga, pasta? Nigga, my mama Italian. Nigga, I got pasta. I, no, I, I ain't that nigga. Right, right, you feel me? So, my, and that ain't nothing to say to Italian people. I'm just saying that's just like joke wise. Some niggas, you know, is this what they own? Okay, this yeah. is what we own. Chameleon. And I get it because you gotta get money. And maybe if I, I just specialize in what I specialize in: spin game, storytelling, and trying to make it sound dope enough to where. It make you wanna engage in the shit that I'm talking about, and all of my shit is tested and proven and tried by me. I'm not gonna spit no shit to get the youngsters out trying some shit that I ain't never fucked with. Come on, I don't, I don't about play that. Know. I don't play that. Right. I talk about what I know and I talk about it in depth, from top to bottom. Oh, you can get all the money you want to roll, roll on the hustle. You can get all the money, and then you can get some of this jail too. Yeah. You feel me? It is. It's you know. So I try to I try to speak on the whole spectrum to give the listener a choice. Because at the same time, I'm trying to make shit for you to listen to, but I'm also trying to teach the niggas who may be coming behind me that, hey, you back there, I'm up here, I'm telling you what they're doing up here, so just listen up. You feel me? You ready. So, were you, with, were you signed with them still when you made Let's Ride, or when did that come yeah, out? So Let's, that yeah, that was the Def Jam album. So, Let's Ride was the first single off Def Jam. I signed to Def Jam in 95, the album came out in 96. I was at Def Jam for a whole two years. I had a follow-up album that I was supposed to drop on Def Jam, but I got in a situation where they ex they expressed to me that they were selling the label. This is when Edgar Bronfman from Seagrams was buying into the Polygram system and he was buying Def Jam. So Russell and Lior called me in the office and was like, hey, we got a deal on the table for the label. We letting you know because you just recorded an album and if we sell this label, we not going to be here. So we want you to have... A shot at, you know, because we know what type of nigga he is. Do you want to still stay on Def Jam? Because if you do and we sell it, we may not be here. We may not know who's going to run the motherfucking label. They said, so if you want to stay, you go. And we're going to drop the record. If you want to leave, we have a proposal. We'll give you X amount of dollars and let you keep the record that you just recorded. So I'm like, damn, they selling the label? Y'all ain't going to be here? I came here to fuck with y'all. So boom, I chose to leave. Then what ended up happening is Leor Cohen, who was Russell's right-hand man at the time, Edgar and them, Edgar Bronfman and them made him a proposal like, hey, we buying the label, we want to keep you, Lior, but you got to scratch all your people, fire everybody that works on you, I got my own people coming in. And Lior supposedly told Edgar Bronfman, these are the motherfuckers who made me, they helped me get to where I'm at, we are together, if they go, I go. And then they say, Edgar was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll keep them and y'all, y'all keep running the label. Now, had I known that, I would have stayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? But yeah. me being a street nigga and a hustler, you finna give me a bag and I get to take this record that I just recorded, <laughs> which was gonna be, which ended up being called The Game. The record yeah. I dropped is called The Game. That was my follow-up Def Jam record. 
you can't see around corners. I thought I was making the right decision, mm -hmm. you know. But I think if I had stayed at the label, I probably would have been huger now. You feel me? But at the end of the day, my nigga, like, life Still is great. Day. Yeah, life is great. It's not know. too late, you know, like that you track. Hey, yeah. this put up on everything. Hey, come on, man. And that's that one I deal with mess. That's a big, that's a good record. Oh, that's one of my favorite hey. songs. Bro. I had that you want to hustle already. like the boy, don't you? Yeah, it's not You're worth your weight in grapes. You feel me? Pox stores. Any, any Pox stores is like crazy ones you ain't, you ain't told them for? Like, you know, uh, some exclusive no, talk shit? No, I ain't no, told all of them. I done told them that because I don't really do a lot of interviews. I, they done heard the story about the barbecue. Nigga, I took even Flint's barbecue in Oakland. Picked him up from the airport. Nigga was a barbecue fiend. He loved barbecue. I picked him up from Flint's in Oakland. I mean, from the airport. Took him to Flint's. He's smelling the food. While I'm in my drop cutler 72 gold and bowls, white top, white interior. And I'm, I'm telling the nigga, bro. Quit trying to open the little thing, bro. We're not eating up in here. And it's just smelling hella good. We get on the freeway, and I'm like, bro, bro, bro. Now, I look over, this nigga is eating. And he was a sloppy barbecue eating nigga. Suck on his fingers, <laughs> all that shit. So he did good till we got to where we was at. I was like, see, man, you just disrespectful, bro. Like, you could have got that shit on my seat. He said, I didn't get nothing on your seat. He opened the door, and he got out. And then he opens the thing, he dips his fingers in the sauce. He's like, oops, I did get a little on the seat. I did. Nigga, all in the white stitching, like... But that, he wasn't disrespectful. The nigga didn't really give a fuck about, like, material, material shit. He didn't have no no gauge for that kind of shit. Because he used to tell him, like, I come from nothing. I ain't never had nothing. I'll tell you a story. I probably told this one too, but it's funny as fuck. So, Adrian Gregory was Pac's manager. And Adrian bought Pac a Jeep Cherokee, a brand new Cherokee. This nigga had never drove before. This nigga called me, hey, Adrian just brought me a new Jeep. Nigga, come over and bring some weed. So, right? So I, I pull up to the apartment. Now, this table is perfect because the apartment he lived in in Oakland, the driveway was like this. So you coming off the street, you come off the street, you come down this long ass driveway, and the apartment, the back of the apartment is here, and the parking lot is back here. So I get over there, and they got a clean ass Jeep. I mean, it's brand new. It's the limited, the one with the gold wheels and the gold pants, right? <laughs> So he like, fuck it, let's smoke. I said, all right, let's do, roll up. He's like, I ain't got no papers and no blunts. I, I said, let's go to the store. He said, all right, come on. And so he went and jumped in the Jeep. I said, you want me to pull it out? No, no, I got it. Okay. So now this long ass driveway, it's a fence, a brick wall here with a fence. So it's long and narrow. This nigga starts the Jeep up. I get in. He back up. Oh, he back up? What? We come out. <laughs> we coming down the bag. Dude, this nigga gets. So on the wall. My first thing when is the passenger mirror. Blah! Right? I'm like, you're on the, I'm like, you're on the wall. The passenger mirror is up against the car. I'm like, you're on the wall. So what? I don't give a fuck. He laughing like a motherfucker. This is a brand new Jeep. He dragged this motherfucker down. He was so on the wall that he couldn't get off. Like, I'm like, turn this way. But it, it was just, I said, this way. We rolled all the way out the driveway. When we got to the street, I said, let me get out and see what's happening. I opened the door. Nigga, the whole passenger side of the Jeep was fucked up. I said, hey, this motherfucker fucked up. So what, let's go get some blunt. <laughs> like, he didn't give a fuck about that kind of shit. And that's what a lot of people don't know about Pop. They know him from All Eyes on Me. But niggas who knew him, like, the nigga never really tripped off of monetary shit. You feel me? At least to, before he got to the death row shit. And, still, and even then, I used to see the nigga just... Spend money. Nigga was a good dude, bro. He was a good dude. He just was a... Uh, if, if, if I had one thing I could say about Pac that I think if he wasn't that way, it might have made him last a little bit longer, is he just was too open to inviting people all the way in. Like, he would meet a nigga. It'd be me, you. I might introduce him to you. We'd be somewhere fucking with blah, blah, blah. And then... You and him would be in L.A. somewhere. He would tell me, this is my little cousin. This is my brother. Well, I mean, he was just a good nigga like that. And sometimes when you... Sometimes that's dangerous. They, yeah, that, especially in this world. You feel me? Like, back when we was younger, you could be like that. But now, like, you got to watch. They got to watch everybody. You feel me? But that's just the world we live in. Mark was a good nigga, bro. Sharp dude. Sharp. But when it came to that, that booth and that music, that nigga work ethic, bro, was ridiculous.
what is something you can pull from Pac that you learned from that, you know, that you can still use for today? Well, a nigga used to tell me all the time, before I had, because he was signed first. I wasn't even signed to Def Jam. And when I first had some labels interested, he was like, man, I said, who do you think I should sign with? Because I had relatively interested in Def Jam and I think probably. Relativity was offering me way more money than Def Jam. But Def Jam was Def Jam. Mm -hmm. You know, how you how can you fuck with that? Right. So um I used to call him, I'd be like, hey, so I got three labels interested. Which one do you think? Nigga, any of them, any of them, you dope, nigga, just sign, just sign, nigga. It don't matter which one, you dope, you gonna blow up. You know, and that's what he used to tell me. He used to push me more. I remember he used to talk about how fat I was. He's fat ass nigga, he's so fat. And I used to be like, huh? He's a hurt. Yeah, oh, cause he could take his shirt off and be all slim and shit. And all that shit though. He's always who ride me out, nigga, you hella fat, you hella fat. I was like, all right, nigga, it's whatever. I'm still getting bitches, nigga. This is not slowing nothing down. We, nigga, you fucking the bitches that I was fucking. You, nigga, we, we rock. But the nigga was just, he was intense. You know what I mean? Nigga was intense. He just wanted to see a nigga be all he could be. And that's the same way I felt about him. I just feel like I failed him once it got to a point where he got so far out ahead of me to where I couldn't track him. Anymore. You know what I mean? It's just like you teach one of your little partners something and then he gets so good at it. You be like, damn, this nigga in the lead with this shit. Like I was just in the park with this nigga, showing this nigga and now this nigga in the lead. You know, so you hit him like I'm coming down. Well, nigga, hit me, nigga. We in Hawaii. Like, I mean, he just was moving so motherfucking fast. Right. I couldn't really keep up with him because my movement was moving, but it was nothing like his movement. That's why I would say he's like the little homie turned big homie. You know what yeah. I mean? I got him right here, though. He's he going to be stuck for what? That's dope. He's done. Mm -hmm. But I built a bike for him, too, and I'm going to have y'all come. We're going to do a segment with that motherfucking motorcycle. It's yeah. called Machiavelli. It's That's a. Uh, 2008 road glide stretch rake 30 inch front end. I mean, I'm gonna fucking hard. This nigga always be my nigga. Like, we just had a special thing. Even when he was way out there and I couldn't catch up with him. When I get him on the line, or when I did bump into him, it was just like, yeah. you ever fuck with a motherfucker that you ain't seen in a while, but then when you look up with Same him, thing. it's just like it was just you seen yeah. a nigga yesterday? That's kind of how I was. That's how you did, um, when, uh, where were you at when you heard the news that Tupac died? I was in New York. I was in New York when I got the news, and um, as, as crazy as it may sound, I just, I don't know, I just felt it was bad from the game. Like, so I'm in New York, I'm in a hotel, and I get the news, and I'm sitting there like, okay, everybody trying to get to Vegas. I'm like, I need to get to Vegas. And then I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to go to Vegas. I don't want to see him like that. I just wait till he's pulled through, and then I get up, because I'm gonna talk shit. That's my, my position. I'm gonna talk shit like, nigga, how the fuck is you niggas out here in a BMW with the windows rolled down? You niggas there though. Like, why is you niggas moving like that when you niggas is talking the type of shit you talking? You yeah. feel me? I mean, it's one thing to just be like, fuck it. Nigga, this how this is the line we pushing. But then when you push that line and what happened happened, you can't be mad because that was the line he's pushing. So I would have expected them to be more. Like, nigga, stealth. You, you see us in the club, you don't see us pulling up to the club, but. He was one of them kind of niggas. He was an outside nigga. Like, I was, like we like to pull up, you know? We, he, the whole time I was on Def Jam, they were trying to put me in limousines and bring me to the back of the House of Blues when we had shows. And, nigga, I'm riding the Harley. I'm jumping on the bike. I'm coming down Sunset. Nigga, locking up the brakes, stopping in front. I want all the shit. And he was the same guy. So I did it. He wasn't, wasn't going to cage him up and put him in a bulletproof car and blah, blah, blah. Uh, nigga wanted to be out there. Yeah, and it, it cost him his life. But... He put enough, he put enough down while he was alive. Most niggas can't die and still, and be, yeah, and still feel the void that, that they had had set out there for a nigga to have. For two bucks, the uh, what you call him? Uh, she had some tears. Back in elementary, I thought I don't miss you. Let me alone, I grew up against the dying breed. Jump on my mind, couldn't find a place to rest. Until I got that third right tattoo on my chest. Tell me, can you feel it? I'm not living in the past, you know the past. Be the first to blast, remember Kato. No longer with us, he deceased. All of the sirens, seen him burning in the streets. Yeah, rest in peace. Is it a heaven for a G? Remember me. Too many homies in the cemetery, shed so many tears. And that shit was hard. Yeah. Man, that shit right there was hard. I mean, he got hella hard shit. But that, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Do you think his music was so dope because he made it so vulnerable? He actually talked about shit he felt and was going through. And that's what a lot of things don't do. I no, I just think God made him that raw. I mean, dude, I used to fuck with this nigga when he was talking about doing songs with me when I was on. And I didn't see none of that new shit that he put. Dude, that nigga was, he just was something different, bro. He was just a different kind of monster. Yeah, a monster. Like, I mean, he used, like I say, he was the little homie that turned big homie. I mean, that nigga, when he played the All Eyes on the album for me, and I sat back there at his house in, in uh, LA, the little thug mansion, and I'm listening to these records. I ain't gonna lie, because it came on with. I will deny you the street body. Come on, man. I'm listening to this shit. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, cause I'm a I'm a competitive nigga when it comes to this music shit. Like any nigga will tell you if you if I'm on a song that you don't get your shit together, cause we could be homies, but nigga, when we get in when we it's just like Kobe playing. Whoever he playing, nigga, y'all could be homies at the club after the game, but nigga, for 48 minutes, nigga, it's fuck, dude. And that's how it is when I get on the track with a nigga. You could be my nigga, nigga, I'm, we just gonna get on here. No, we not. No, I'm gonna get on that motherfucking gas, nigga. So, and that's just how I feel. I'm just competitive. Like, I came up in a competitive era. I came up before features. Your whole album used to have to be you. You used to have to, nigga. You feel me? And it was a competitive thing. You could be my nigga, but nigga, when your album drop and they feeling that motherfucker, my job is for when my shit drop, to make them feel my shit. So whenever I do, like, collabs, I'm finna get on there and gas, my nigga. What's your favorite collabs ever that you did? Somebody that's in the It's crazy, like... It's funny, like, the songs with pop are the ones that people remember. But I got records with RBL Posse that, that, that was dope as fuck. I got records I did with, um, with San Quinn. Me and San Quinn, that, that what you call them record was stupid dope. Me and Sebo had a record, Condo Keys, that was stupid dope. Like, it's crazy. It just depends on, like, I never, I never have a favorite rich thing. Because there's a lot of shit out there. But I'll be honest with you. This latest thing that I did with Snoop on my new project. The reason I like that record is because you got a nigga like Snoop who says I inspired him to rap. And he took whatever inspiration that was and nigga blew the roof off the motherfucker. You feel me? And then even though it's later in the game when he's not at the height of his death or whatever, to me he's still that nigga Snoop. Though. And then he comes and puts a verse on the song with me. And, and I listen to it and I'm just like, because I always felt, excuse me, that Snoop was one of them niggas who had just that voice. Like, and then people say that about me, they were dope with that voice. So to have my voice next to Snoop, I don't give a fuck what stage of my or his career is in, to me, is it's just dope. Because I watched them, that nigga just kill shit, bro. Like to this day, I don't think it's a bigger rapper. I mean, pop, people always say with pop. To me, Pac is huge, but Snoop is just a different animal, man. That nigga Snoop didn't put in work, 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 and then have crazy records. So I got a lot of cool shit. I got records with Be Legit that's super dope to me. Even the shit I did with Messy Moore, my nigga, and, and shout out Mess, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I did a song with Mess on Cocaine Ballads. Like, I like niggas who really got spit. I don't like jumping on songs and niggas who ain't talking about nothing. That's why you don't hear a lot of rich features because I turn money down when the record ain't right. right. You know? And it's probably some shit out there people like, well, you probably should have turned that down. But I'm just saying, like, hey, now man, you want the money. Right. You feel me? But for the most part, I don't, I, I turn more money down than I took based on, nigga, to me, the record gotta be dope. Who, who are your favorite producers right now? Well, you know what, it's a lot of good production out there. If I go from like back when... Give me top 10. Top 10 producers of all time? Yeah. Local or just everything? Everything. I'd have to put Dre, I'd have to put Dre way up. I never got a Dre beat. I mean, I wanted one like every other nigga. But when I think of his consistency and his genius on how he can take this artist, he took Easy, took Snoop, took himself, you know, took 50. Eminem, like, and he, him being a West Coast nigga, but they got East Coast niggas too that's 
stupid. Them niggas who well, was fucking with Rick Ross, I, I used to want them niggas beat so bad. Yeah. Uh, cool and Dre. Cool and Dre, man, them niggas put some beautiful music up on the Ross. And Ross to me was like my land, player type shit yeah. at the holes. You know, and they gave him a nice canvas to paint on. Um, right now, for, for right now, I gotta say the mechanics. Not just cause I got a record with them, because them young niggas brought our sound back to where it needs to be, like straight mob. Um, this is our first project together, but I've been knowing they've been doing music, they've been knowing I've been doing music. Sometimes it happened like that. Like me and Short been homies forever and just did our first song shit 10 years ago. So sometimes it happened like that. But as far as production, I mean, it's a lot of dope niggas who got beats, you know? I heard a story like uh, we did onto a story with Jay Stalin. He said he was uh, he was gonna buy Stalin or sign him or some shit like that. Stalin came to me through DJ Girl. Mm -hmm. Stalin was my nigga, and if you look in, nigga, you know. Stalin your ass came to fuck with me, <laughs> and that nigga right there, <laughs> him, yeah, now I'm fucking with him, but that nigga somehow said something, and him and Stalin took off. And built live wire and everything else. I can't do nothing but commend the nigga. The little nigga was ready to go. I had a different plan for Jay Style. This was my plan. I had already heard that the nigga was, could rap. He was like dope. You feel me? He was young as fuck. Me being a nigga who had been on a label before and now knowing how labels work, my pitch was nigga, I want to get you signed to somebody. I want to do the same thing I watched Irv Gotti do at Def Jam, tell him that DMX was the greatest thing ever, that this nigga's the next Tupac, and all the shit, because Lior even told me, but you can listen to this, Irv says this is the next Tupac, blah, blah, blah. So I, want, I wanted to take that, once I learned that you can, you can tell a label whatever you need to tell them, and this ain't no diss to, to DMX, DMX my nigga, good nigga, and turned out to be a very relevant and high-powered artist. But what I'm saying is Irv got him and blew so much smoke up the label's ass to where the label put out a whole ton of money. Now one thing about when the label puts out a ton of money, at the least you know you're going to get promoted because they trying to make their money back. So you know you're going to get a look. Now what you do with the look is on you. So that was the plan I had for style. I was like, let's sign this nigga, get somebody to give us a ton of money, and then and then we're going to make their money back. We're going to get the right features, do the right shit. Because I feel like the sky was a limit fan. But I wasn't doing fast enough for him. I was a nigga who was already established, having money. He was a young nigga who was trying to get to the money. So that guy right there. Put your hand up. Turn around. Him. He did it. I'm talking about how, I'm talking about how you snubbed me from Jay Steezy. So... Yeah, so, so he, he, he threw no, show the punch, show the punch again, which one you got me with? <laughs> hey, hey. When we, hey, listen, when we do our versions, we're going to tell the other side of the story. There's <laughs> <laughs> his version, there's our version, and there's the truth. They didn't ask about you, they just asked where he ended up at, and I'll tell you this story right here. So anyway, this is the wanted it right now. And I remember the nigga told me, nigga, y'all niggas out here buying Escalades, nigga, and nigga, y'all lagging on my shit. <laughs> so, I was like, now, I could have been the kind of nigga who signed Style. Right. I never made him sign no contract, because I had been in a situation like that with the 415 shit, where I was in contract, and a nigga kind of like held my career up. So, I never wanted to put that on nobody else, even though that is standard business in the music industry. But I never signed him to nothing. The little nigga went out, built his own empire, and I can't do nothing but like applaud him. And it was crazy how my shit come full circle with his jive ass. I just was on the phone with him. Now me and him fixing to do an album. Ain't this some shit? Like, yeah, 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 with his jive ass. I'm talking about style. I said it's crazy how shit come full circle because now I got a record with the nigga who gambled. My God, and then now I'm about to do one with my God. And this some shit. And that's how shit works. I love them niggas. I love Stella and nigga we on. You feel me? Hey, hey bro, you gonna love this because it's the truth. You feel me? Listen, if I come in that door, it's gonna be trouble. Hey, it's, it's good, bro. We don't keep them behind the glass. You feel me? Yeah, 
but no, shout out to Jay Stalin and, and everything that nigga did. He built Live Wire, built his own empire, and watch what we do. One thing about me, and I will tell you this, my nigga. Anything that me and somebody do, I'm going to attempt to push it to where when you hear it, it's like, oh, that's that's some other shit they doing. That's what I'm into. I've been into that my whole life. I always like it to be some other shit. Yeah. You so, feel me? On your, on your new, uh, on your new project, you're dropping more some collabs you got on there. What's some exciting projects going on there? So, so on the bro room, I got a feature from Snoop. I got Snoop on a song called No Higher. I actually got him and Mozzie on that record. And I think it was key. Shout out Mozzie. Shout out Snoop. Um, I thought it was key to put Mozzie on that Snoop record. I like the vibe. And to me, I just heard Mozzie on that record. And then later on, I was like, damn. Even on the gang shit, it's like I got both sides on one joint. And they both killing shit. So shout out to them niggas for even fucking with me on that. So I got Snoop. I got Mozzie. That's hard. I got Be Legit on the record. I got Too Short on the record. Uh, too short is on uh, pussy wet. Be legit is on bad bitches. I got the boy burner. Uh, so the grow room is really all about pop. So I try to feature niggas who know for smoking. I got burner on the record. I got Sebo on the record. I got Yuck Mouth on the record. Shout out Yuck. Um, so I think that's it. Yuck, Sebo, Burner, Short, Vila, and then and I'm not even really a feature. Nigga. I'd be like and fat. And, and, and the only reason I forgot about that is because I got a hook from Fab on a hot record with that, that Dot did the uh, beat on. It's the only record on the room that doesn't have a majority hook. So, I feel like I was trying to bring a, a weed project together with a bunch of niggas who was known stoners, and that's what I came up with. When'd you get when'd you get involved in the whole weed thing? You know I mean? Well, cause I'm trying to turn the negative into a positive. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I, I caught a weed case in 2012, which was a legal grow case. And now that I'm out and the legal market is proper, I figured I'd try to turn the negative into a positive. They have an equity program. I am a felon for that. So I hooked up with some people who already had something going and I am the brand ambassador. Slash partner for the purple cake yeah. batter thing that we doing. Did you some time for that? What? Nigga did hella time a whole year. Oh, you know that? <laughs> hey, I know niggas gonna say what? Yeah, nigga, that was hella time for a nigga who used to sit in the jacuzzi with the Uzi. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, so what, that song you did uh, with the Loonies, what, did that, what year did that come about? Uh, I got five on it. Yeah, what, okay, so what happened was this. I'm gonna give you my whole shit. Four on five. It's 89, 90. Bam. That was the first shit I did. Mm -hmm. Then I started trapping. I told you I did a little rapping. I did a little trapping. I said, no more trapping. No more trapping. So I trapped into a half a thing case. Caught a case for a half a kilo of coke. Boom. That shut me down for a minute. That was my first offense. Boom. I went and did a year. That's all I did. It was a year and hella probation and hella motherfucking uh, uh, three felony 15 year priors. So the judge is playing to me, he's like, I need, if you come back to my court, courtroom, you got three priors, I can give you 15 years on. He said, do you understand what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I was trying to get out of it. He said, well, let me clarify. So you come back in here for anything cocaine related. I can throw them charges out, but I can still violate you on each prior you got. So I give you 10 on the first prior, 15 on the second prior, and 15 on the third. That's 45 years. That's 40 years you got coming. You see, you understand? I was like, me come blend that. And that's when I put the coat down. Period. You know? So, what I ended up doing is, when I came from the half thing case, I had just came out. I hadn't had no records out since 4 and 5. And that's when the Loonies put me on the I Got Five on the record. That's when Tupac put me on the Heavy in the Game record. And those two records combined made Def Jam start looking. That's where Def Jam came, picked me up. Boom. Mm -hmm. And I went from Def Jam. Four. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, what was I say? Another thing I want to ask you. Um, what was that whole little uh, charade about you, uh, you and E40? You guys got into it or whatever, and then I seen that he tried to call you a rat or some shit. But what was that shit all about? So basically, 49ers lost the Super Bowl. And I oh, hit 40 shit. up with some <laughs> way out shit. You know, just on some fo football trash talk. And he responded, and he said some things that to me were out of context for the conversation. Now, in hindsight, once we sat down and came to the table, he told me things like, 
you know, me and, me and you never trash talk about a record. I mean, about uh, sports before, so he kind of caught me off guard. Everybody was smashing up, talking shit, blah, 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 blah. He got caught in the moment, and he said some things that I interpreted as him testing my strength credit. Right, right. You feel me? He said that ain't what he meant. It was a post that I put up a picture of him, you know, you know later, uh, get up, and he was like, you talking, you showing the Niners that I used to do the look. So it's like you snitching it's on butter, me. Right? Yeah, butter, so it's like you snitching on me. But when I heard the snitch word, it took me back to some whole other shit because I would be the first to admit, niggas tried to put some bullshit on my name when I caught a case. So, but I had got past that because I knew it wasn't no, relate, no, no relative info on that that was for real. To hear one of your mans, because Foley's my man, and I'll say that to everybody, this is my nigga, like, I fuck with it, like, I love that nigga, that's one of my guys. To hear a nigga like that say that, it, I took it the wrong way. And I was like, really, my nigga? So I do just I what I do. Like, yeah, so I do just what I do. I'm like, okay, my nigga, since this is where we at with it, I need you to produce the paperwork to substantiate the shit you're talking about. Because people around the world have heard you say that, or seen you text that, and blah, blah, blah. So for that sake, I never really tripped off of it because now I know who I am. But at the same time, that's where I went with it. Like, you got X amount of time to, you know, push the paperwork forward, show the people what you're talking about. You feel me? Bam, we end up squashing it. It's behind us. A lot of people applauded us on it. A lot of people looked at it and still tripped. I get it. I get it. A lot of people feel like I should still be tripping. I get it. But if this is my guy, this is somebody that I, yeah, we, we had a falling out, maybe we hashed it, and it's good. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I said some shit that rubbed him the wrong way. He said some shit that I misinterpreted, and bam. You know, but it's a lot of niggas dead for them same type of situations. A lot of niggas dead. You feel me? So you could look at it either way. You could look at it like, fuck it, I'm going to exterminate any nigga to say anything about me and put my own life in risk and my kids and my family at risk, I might go to jail or anything. Or you could look at it like, okay, what I did is what the fuck I wanted to do. I wanted to talk to 40. 40 wanted to talk to me. We sat and we asked it out. That's what I always do. What the fuck I want to do. I don't give a fuck about what nobody's saying, what nobody thinking, because I'm, I'm above that. I wish more people could get to where I'm at with that. Because I had a lot of OG niggas who are my age and of my stature who be like, Rich, I applaud you on that. I wish I could get there, but I'm the type of nigga, nigga, I just can't let shit go, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, to each his own. But a lot of people said that was big of us, the way we, you know. And I love that nigga, Earl. Earl a good nigga. We, we from the same sort. Funny thing about people, my nigga, you know, we can agree to disagree. And sometimes a nigga can say some shit that might piss you off and, you know, fuck it, we knuckle up, nigga, or whatever you want to do, but nigga, we gonna keep pushing. Like, when I go get the chopper, he go get the chopper, and his niggas knocking at my niggas, my niggas knocking at his niggas. I get it, but I've been there, done that, bro. We trying to eat, we trying to feed the family. Yeah, we trying to eat and feed the kids, my nigga. That nigga see that and be like, they can do it, we can do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what, to be honest with you, Rich, like, when I heard all that bullshit was going on, I forget, bro. Like I took it, like I was taking it personal because of, like you know, like, right. the roots I have as a fan for you guys. Right. It's like, bro, it's making like I was looking at like man, the Bay Area is like they're making, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a lot of that. And, and then when y'all making us look bad, man, what's up with that shit? Like, and then when 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 everything came back on some real player shit, like some real bosses, you sit down, you, you put it behind you, and and move towards a positive message, but it couldn't have got done with more class. Bro. And you know, it's, it was crazy too. I, it was a few posts where he was like, ah oh, man, the old is Trying to fake like that. Yeah, we, fuck that. Man, we don't. I mean, we. I'm. I can tell you this, my nigga. I know 40's pedigree. Yeah. I know where 40 came from. I know his family members. Them niggas is just like me and my niggas. Everybody gonna put in work. Everybody gonna do the shit. See, it's really just a pissing match when you get all the way into it. And at the end of the day, what do you do? You sit back. We got two niggas who can hash something out and get back to this paper. Or we got two niggas who can kill each other and, you know. Yeah, because that's, yeah, yeah, that's what it would have been. He got real niggas on his end. I got real niggas on my end. Nine times out of ten, this niggas who ain't had nothing to do with it gonna get hurt and fucked over. So I'm, I'm not with promoting or pushing bullshit that's mine on nobody else. So that's how we did that, man. How y'all been rocking for that? Since, since, no, me and, me and 40 been rocking since, like right around the 415 area, 88, 87, 88, like, 
Yeah. You know him prior before the music shit, or you met him? Yeah, before? yeah, I know him from the dope game. Because okay. like I said, Be Legit was a nigga who was at that beat shop, okay. and BM40 was linked in. But I had, you know, when you when you sell dope, and I'm not promoting this to the kids, but this is my history. But when you sell dope, you know niggas that's moving dope. Right. Like, you know niggas that's yeah. from whatever city. You be like, okay, them niggas doing numbers. Of the, right. You know, them niggas over there, they fucking with it. Yeah. So I, I had been hearing of the key niggas from there. And in Vallejo, it was Dre them with some of them niggas, you know? And 40 them was doing their thing. You know, and it was it was a bunch of niggas who was getting money, and them, them was the kind of niggas that I was on my radar. Like the niggas who wasn't getting money wasn't on my radar because we was trying to get money. And Dre was like, man, let me tell you, me and Dre did a whole lot of shows together. Like right when Four One Five was out, Dre always had music out. So me and Dre used to perform in Concord, Sacramento, all the shit. You feel me? And they, they both place di different sides of the city, you know? It's just kind of like, I'm from East Oakland, Stalin from West Oakland. So you might listen to Stalin's story, and you might listen to my story, and you'd be like, damn, how do them niggas coexist? They from the same city. This nigga say he did all this, this nigga say he did all that. But that, that kind of shit can happen in a city, you know what I mean? So Dre, and, and I'm one of them niggas, like, I'm good with everybody, my nigga. You feel me? Dre was a very, very different kind of nigga, bro. I mean, hella funny, hella cool, but hustle for real. I'm talking about prior to music shit, whether it be the pee, whether it be the, 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 the bank robbery shit, whatever, Dre was always after his nickels, you feel me? Good nigga, another good nigga that we lost. So, like, this rap shit, it'd be funny when I sit back and I hate to tell all these stories because I'm just now dropping a record. People look at this and be like, that nigga hella old, why that nigga still? Because nigga, I still got game, nigga. Hello, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, so hey, music is music, my nigga. The day that I put out some shit that's trash, then you can ask me to, to relinquish the, the desire to spit the shit. But Rolling Stones, the Rolling Stones is like 100 years old. That motherfucker still rocking. Hey, hey, hey. That's all we're going to do is roll. What about the Jack? The Jack, yeah, Jack was a good nigga too, Jack. I met Jack through Sebo, because Sebo had put the figures on. Yeah. And back then, all of them niggas was a group. Jack happened to jump out and be able to make a sound that people, you know, the kind of melodic little mm -hmm. singing thing that took off, you know, like on the right here joint and whatnot. Yeah. And Jack was able to, he, he was able to set a lane for himself. Uh, rest in peace to Jack. I talk about him on his record. Jack was a good nigga. You know what I mean? Good nigga, rock. Um, Right place, wrong time. I, when I say right place, wrong time, he was with his people, niggas he fucked with. So it's right place, but he was there at the wrong time. You know what I mean? And, but he was a good nigga though, Jack was short. We, we had a lot of good niggas lose their lives from around here, bro. And one thing about me, every hour on the clock, I'm trying to stay alive. Because I know I live in a place that kills niggas like that. Nigga, I'm from East Oakland. That's all I claim, that's all I represent is East Oakland. One thing I know about East, East, East Oakland, it's like a drain, nigga. Where when the water's coming down and do that little thing, if you sitting still, you'll get sucked into that drain and this motherfucker will kill you. But if you do it moving, and, and I'll say this in, in closing, or if we not close, but I'll say this to any nigga from any inner city, wherever the fuck you from, my nigga, whether it be East Coast, West Coast, nigga, Midwest, wherever. If you consider yourself an individual that got more game than the average nigga from your area, meaning your hustle is crazy, uh, your, 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 your stack game is, is vicious, your, your whole swag is, is, is whatever, your drip, whatever you want to call it, it's really like above average. And what you need to do every fucking day you wake up is try to remember how to stay alive. Because it's situations that's looking to knock you over. Not just niggas. I'm talking about it's just energy that's looking to knock you over. Period. So when a nigga take his life for granted to where he feel like he's so cool and everything's so dope to where he can just kind of kick it and chill, that's when you find out, damn, a nigga done got his head knocked off. You gotta keep trying to survive. You can't take for granted that just because you one of them niggas that it ain't niggas looking to move you out that position, bro. Yeah. Period.
If you're one of them niggas, this niggas looking to move you. So you're going to have to try to stay alive, my nigga. Yeah. So, BG, when you was growing up in the town, do you remember, like, Felix Mitchell and them? And, like, Jerry, what? How, nigga, what? Felix Mitchell set a mark in 69, 69 Village that, I mean, nigga, they did his funeral. The boy was in a horse-drawn carriage, all the shit. They, he was, but he was, I was a, a young nigga then when he died. Lil D came behind him. D was my era, but D was, he was way more active than the average nigga at that age at that time. You feel me? But yeah, all that was my era. Oh, D was my era. D was, was before me. But yeah, hell yeah, I know about all of that. How old you when that was my like, 17, 17. We all, all the East Oakland niggas, we all got in the game. Like, I got in the game in 16, 11th grade. You know, when I seen my first base rock, you know, when we first started fucking with it. Early 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the, everything you got going on with the draw, where do you see this going in like 10 years? Well, what I'm trying to do with the, with the, with the cake batter is this. That's my first launch. I got two more strains I'm coming with. I got an OG, then I got a, uh, uh, something I can't talk about. Fire. What? <laughs> Boy, I hope the, I hope the scientists are up there working <laughs> diligently producing this thing that we need. But yeah, what I'm trying to do with the draw is, I'm just trying to be a part of, we started this gangster shit. You think we're finna let Elon Musk and all that <laughs> yeah, here just cause they got a whole bunch of money and they gonna come in here and they just gonna take on everything and uh, fuck all that. I'm trying to get in on that level and once I get in, like shout out to a nigga like Bernie. We're the enterprise of this shit. They scared just, of motherfuckers like you, like you, Bernie, they be scared of niggas. Like right. I'm like trying to get in and man. build a brand and put my people in position to eat. When I say my people, I'm not just talking about my home, I'm just talking about my people. People who was in with this movement when it was frowned upon. I was smoking weed when he was serving females, be like, I don't fuck with niggas who smoke. I don't fuck with niggas who smoke. Like, it was frowned upon. Now your granny, all up at Harborside, copping with her old ass. You know, like she wants some old no, you need some triple OG. Right. You know? so this is and like, yeah, I want in, man. I want shit. I, I was a part of the original movement. So I just feel it's only right that the pioneers, and shout out to anybody doing time for treat, anybody who stood on corners and stuffed nickel bags, so we with seeds in it. It's niggas like you who made it possible for niggas like these people back here. You see this shit? It's a whole laboratory back there, and they suck it up. Pop. She don't yeah. make no sense. She's yeah. playing 20. Yeah. And he has one of you. Yeah. So, it's like as you drop it, we expect more from what you need. Oh, I'm back. I'm back on. So, I'm back on. So, yeah, we're not letting up. I'm going to keep my foot on. On the gas. Uh, I got this project. I got a project coming up behind this. I haven't titled it yet. I got records with Pilo. I got records with Earth the Jerk. I got records with the boy I Am Sue. Okay. I got records that I'm trying to, trying to get this boy. Hey, pray for me. I'm trying to get Ty Dolla Sign on the record. You got it. You go get it. Come on, go get it. You know who don't want it. Come on, That man. shit, I'm moving, man. I'm back moving. You feel me? God is good. Yes, sir. Hey, and check this out. Amid the virus, don't worry. Because there will be an antidote. But it won't be from the CDC. It'll be the PCB. Purple K battery. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. Hey, man. And there you have it. Untold Story 7, and we out. Yeah. yeah. The best one they've done. Double law. Double law to you. See, yeah, the real, that's real shit, though. See, you was trying to get me when y'all was on episode two. I said, I'm going to let these niggas see. Hey, we're going to see you at the gas station. Hey, but no, he hit me like, man, what you did, what you call it? Trying to get out. I said, let me let them simmer real quick. Yeah. Y'all got to set it. Y'all ready? Yeah, yeah. Hey, appreciate it.